Hello everyone, this is Simon from Simon Says Let's Wrestle. This is going to be my raw review slash podcast. My brother Sam is currently out doing a couple of different things, so you got me riding solo tonight. So, first off, I was really interested in this episode of Monday Night Raw. Because first off, we're on the road to WrestleMania. And that's the most exciting time to be a wrestling fan. Number two is that, you know, Vix McMahon came out a couple weeks ago with authority with his family. Basically saying, hey, our ratings have been going low. We're not giving you what you want. You know, we're here to make changes to give you what you want. So I was really intrigued to see what kind of changes they were going to make tonight to maybe improve or were they just going to fall into the same thing because you because you probably like you heard a million times there's really no other competition out there there's no wcw i mean there you know there's new japan all elite wrestling but that's not the same thing as the wcw back in 90s so it could just been lip service by mcmahon's just to make us happy for a little bit uh, after watching Raw tonight, I do believe I see some. Um, I do see some silver lining. I did see some changes. They did change the format up, but I'll get into that. Uh, the first segment uh, that came out tonight was with Seth Rollins and Bobby Lashley fighting. I really enjoyed this segment because it was fast-paced, full of action, and you know, it wasn't even only because of the segment because it was different than just normal Stephanie McMahon coming out, giving a 10-minute promo, running down the crowd, running down a particular superstar, and then making a match. You know, it had two superstars that are huge in their own way actually come together, and to me, it's a fresh matchup. Um, First off, we got Seth Rollins. I mean, he is the guy. I will not call him the man, because Becky Lynch is the man. And then we got Bobby Lashley, who... They call the next big thing. Now, the reason why I'm excited about these two is that Seth Rollins, if you gave him the Universal Championship, no one would bat an eye at that. That man or that guy deserves a Universal Championship at one point. He has not held it for a long time, and he's put Raw on his back and has been carrying it while Brock goes, plays around, and doesn't uh, defend the Universal title. Then you got Bobby Lashley, who who's really, I don't want to call him an afterthought, but has just not, just hasn't been living up to his moniker as the next big thing. He's had a couple different feuds. I mean, he beat Reigns once, but, uh, but nothing really since then. Um, you know, and also, I am really enjoy his, him being a heel with Leo Rush. I think that's been a really good pairing so far. At first, I kind of didn't buy it. You know, I just, I, I'm be honest with you, I was never a big Bobby Lashley fan. Um, I kind of quit watching, kind of quit watch wrestling whenever Bobby Lashley was kind of the big deal there. Um, so, and also to me, he's not that good of a promo guy. So, I've just never been a big Lashley guy. But you can just look at him and know he, he has it. And he's, you know, he's just going to, he's just a fantastic wrestler, and uh, he's a big guy. Uh, so, I'm happy that these two are getting to go at each other. The reason why, another reason why I'm happy they're getting to go with each other is that, first off, um, Seth Rollins has been kind of in the IC picture with Dean Ambrose, kind of that crowd, you know, kind of with the Shield connection, and just ever since the Shield came back to reform, it's just been weird and just not as good as people expected. And I feel like Seth Rollins has been so good, they just know it's he's going to make things work. So of course he got the IC belt. But I feel like they have bigger plans for him coming Mania time. And they're wanting to kind of get him away from Dean Ambrose and the IC title. And of course I was saying with Bobby Lashley that he's he hasn't had the greatest feuds ever since coming back to WWE. So I feel like, I mean Seth Rollins could be Universal Champ. So Bobby Lashley in a sense is going to be feuding the, potentially the Universal Champion. So I think it's going to be great, uh, great for both of them. Seth Rollins gets out of his thing, and Bobby Lashley gets to move on to something that he deserves. Um, I know the Royal Rumble is three weeks away, but my pre-booking is I can see uh, Seth Rollins, Lashley, and Ambrose get in the Intercontinental in the IC match, and then um, 
Ambrose reclaiming so these two can continue their feud and Ambrose can move on to someone else. So I think it's, uh, I think this is fantastic. I think this segment was really, really done really well. Um, and I enjoy that these two are getting paired together. And also, too, I think it's a really fresh matchup, too. Our next segment was John Cena, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, and Dean Ambrose. So at the very beginning, John Cena came out and announced he was going to be in the World Rumble, which I, no, I bet everyone, I, every, I knew everyone was expecting that. I mean, he came back to SmackDown, and you know he was there for a reason. He uh, wanted to go to the World Rumble. Then Drew McIntyre came out and pretty much was talking some noise. Um, and, you know, the promo between the two, you could say that happens a lot. I mean, every time John Cena comes out, you know, a wrestler comes out, you know, an indie guy, a guy who gets overlooked, you know, just someone in that tier always calls him out and always wants to take John Cena down. And that's getting kind of stale. But I feel like there's a silver lining to that. I'll get to that in a second. Um, first, uh, we'll get to that. First off, I'm going to... I think a lot of people see this promo and kind of think of what I just said, that, hey, this is boring, this happened before. But to me, the silver lining is is that Drew McIntyre got to share the ring with John Cena and not just in a six-man tag. This was a personal one-v-1 situation, kind of like what happened with Becky Lynch last Tuesday. I believe that WWE sees Becky Lynch and Drew McIntyre. Of course, um, Becky Lynch has already been the champion, but Drew, Mc Drew McIntyre as a universal champion. They see them as top guys, which they are, and I see and they see them as people who can put the come on the show and run with it. So getting in the ring with John Cena should make a big vote of confidence for Drew McIntyre. So I agree that the promo was probably pretty boring compared to a lot of stuff but but just the but getting to be in a ring with John Cena just just cements that that Drew McIntyre is going to be the guy and we can get that into another episode but I think it's going to be very soon so when so John Cena and Drew McIntyre came to blows then, of course, Bobby Lashley came out, Star Attack, and Rollins came out. They did their thing. Then Ambrose came in, Star Attack, and uh, uh, Seth Rollins, so it was just a madhouse. Then Finn Balor came out and even up the odds. So when that happened, that turned into you know a six-man tag, which is kind of surprising to me. I feel like in the old show that this would have made a vintage, so that was kind of cool. You know, in the first segment... You had kind of chaos, which was different. And then with this segment, if this was 2018, this would have been the main event of the show. Um, and I actually halfway enjoyed the match. Um, you know, with that much talent in the ring, you're going to have you're you're going to get you're going to get a good match regardless. You know, it might not be a five star classic in New Japan. You know, it might not even be a super pay per view worthy match. But if you have that kind of talent. You're going to get a decent match. Um, so at the end, Rollins got a lot of offense. He curb stomped Dean Ambrose, got the win. Um, Triple H basically told Seth Rollins, you know, burn it down. He did. He got the win over Dean Ambrose, and he wanted to get his rematch. You know, at the end, it was kind of weird to me because at the end, it just it seemed to really drag on. I mean, you see Cena giving out his stuff. I mean... It just was a, it just, I don't know if it was, they were off or it was the point, but something just seemed off. But at the very end, you know, Rollins music's playing, all that good stuff, they're cheering and all that. And then on the Titan Tron, you see Triple H talking with Bailey and Sasha Banks. So I guess that implies that Triple H really didn't care about Seth Rollins. He told him that and he wasn't paying attention and Seth Rollins was trying to prove a point. So what happened was Seth Rollins got, got pissed off walked to the back, found Triple H, and basically said that I burned it down. I deserve my title shot. <coughs> Excuse me. And slapped the cup out of Triple H's hand. Uh, I guess that proved to Triple H that Seth Rollins burned it down, and he just said, hey, I'm going to give you a title shot tonight in a uh, 
false count anywhere match so um i think with the segment i enjoyed the segment um i felt like you know the segment itself was good i feel like some parts were uh were kind of uh repetitive with because there are other superstars have done that with cena but drew mcintyre uh is probably going to be his way as future universal champion uh seth rollins got the win over indian ambrose and it just moved uh storyline further so i thought it wasn't a bad segment uh, next, we have the uh, Hulk Hogan celebrates the legacy of Mean Gene Oakland. Uh, with this, I actually really enjoyed this segment. You know, there's some I saw some stuff online where people were like not happy that Hogan was in it. First off, I think Hogan deserved to be there. I know Hogan made some mistakes in the past, but it's WWE. It's Ho- it's Hogan's home, um, and I feel like there's there's no one else who deserves more to um, do this than Hogan. You know, I feel like Mean Gene made Hogan, and Hogan made Mean Gene. Um, some people say that you know they were ta- that Hogan was taking some spotlight from Mean Gene, and it should all have been about him. You know, I've been watching wrestling for a while, and I've been a long time, and there's been like special tributes to it. But I feel like I won't remember this one for a long time because it just wasn't a quick, a quick, you know, video and a picture of Mean Gene. You know, you had Hulk Hogan, the Immortal Hulk Hogan, come out and drop, you know, drop a quick promo at the beginning, then just became, uh, uh, just became Terry, and talk from the heart. And then I really enjoyed his uh, promo at the end, going in character, talking about Mean Gene, some tag team match, you know, talking with Gorilla Monsoon and whatnot. You can just, I feel, I personally don't know Mean Gene, but I feel like Mean Gene would want that. He'd want Hogan to carry business on. You know, Mean Gene was an entertainer. He wants people entertained. He wouldn't want people to just sit there and be sad about him he wanted them celebrate his life and the rest in the professional wrestling business and there was no better person to do than hogan so some people might consider hogan taking the spotlight i don't think there was like i said if it wasn't for mean gene i don't think it'd be the same hulk hogan if it wasn't for hulk hogan i don't think it'd be the same mean gene so i think it was a perfect way to tribute mean gene now the next segment was the lumberjack match with uh, bobby Roode, chad gable and the revival i could probably spend a whole podcast just just discussing how i really feel about how the rivals being booked I don't really get, I mean, they're becoming a really good tag team, Bobby Roode and Chad Gable, but, I mean, I still, I guess I understand it, but I really don't get the pairing. Um, Bobby Roode is a, fanti- is a good worker. Uh, I think he deserves more. Chad Gable is definitely a tag team guy. I uh, really enjoy the uh, Olympic gimmick. Um, I think there could be another partner out there for him, but those two are together, so I'll be done with that. Revival. Probably best tag team in the world. Um, I think in the du- best tag team in the WWE. I think uh, just old school when they were in NXT tore the house down with everybody. So, so it was a lumberjack match, and it seems like there's been a lot of fishy stuff going on. You know, revivals always getting screwed over, losing different ways. So uh, they had lumberjacks that were out there. Um, kind of understood the gimmick well first off i'll say is once again i enjoyed how they changed things up i don't remember the last time i saw a lumberjack match that meant anything on raw i mean it was for a tag team gold some people could argue it wasn't me a lot but it still was for championship and on that note i do not like it when they called it the gold the belts are red and i do believe it's like bronze and mill there is nowhere near gold and when they call it gold, it's not gold, guys. But anyways, um, you know, first time there's been a, a lumberjack for some kind of importance. So really enjoyed that they threw, you know, that stipulation out there. Really enjoyed the match. It was a really fun match. Um, I think this could potentially be a pay-per-view worthy uh, match between them two, between those two. Uh, but like I was saying, I mean, with the best tag team in the world, you got Bobby Roode, who's a veteran, who's one of the best veterans around. And you got Olympic, uh, Olympic wrestler in there. I mean, you're going to get a good match. 
out of them, especially to give them time and some stakes. I think you're uh, I think it, you're going to have a great match no matter what you do. Um, I think that um, you know at World Rumble, I think it potentially could be a match of the night at the World Rumble if uh, if they get the time to do it. If they get yeah, if they get the time to do it, I think this potentially could be the match tonight. Uh, next segment we have uh, Elias versus Baron Corbin. The next segment was Elias versus Baron Corbin. You know the pretty much usual. Elias comes out, insults the crowd. He announced he's going to uh, be in the Royal Rumble. Baron Corbin comes out. They do their thing. They had their match. Um, Corbin wins. Um, you know I feel like these guys. They're, they don't have the greatest chemistry together. I feel like they're kind of in no man's land. You know, Elias has fantastic. Uh, he's a has fantastic charisma, but his work rate could be better. Uh, Corbin's Corbin. I think that with the right person, Corbin can really shine. When you both have those two types, those two types of guys together, you can get man matches. But they got the job done. It was a TV match, you know, and I think, you know, they're both going to end a rumble and do fine. So, match was okay. Segment was okay. Ah, uh, next. Uh, next segment, we have Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman. Uh, Braun Strowman. Um, I heard that Braun Strowman was not clear yet, so I was not expecting any confrontation, which was kind of nice because, like, like in old show, you know, Brock would come down, he give him an F five, walk away, you know, there had to be they had to change it up a little bit. So Braun came down to the ring, basically called out Lesnar, and then on the uh, Titan Tron, uh, Paul Hammond came uh showed up with Brock Lesnar and talked his noise like he always does. And basically just had a back and forth. Uh, Braun kept calling Brock out. He came to came down the ring. He walked around the ring a little bit. Um, laughed how mad uh, Braun was and just walked away. With this, it was it was okay. Um, I'm I I just wish they would do something with the Universal Title. Put him for Braun for goodness sakes. Give it to Drew. I mean Brock Lesnar's a legend and he he it's cool. But just the mistake's gone. I mean, this is, this is, this is the Universal Championship. This is supposed to be the the feud, the biggest feud. In I don't care about it at all. If this match was even on the card, I would not care because it's just it's just not good. I don't know what they can do. They just need to move on from Lesnar. He needs to go back to UFC. Do his thing and just get the belt on somebody so it can be defended. And I can actually care about this universal title. So yeah, I wasn't a big fan of this, and also it, it didn't make it any better that Braun was not even cleared, so you knew nothing would happen. The next segment was a mixed max challenge with Apollo Cruz, Ember Moon, and they're facing Jinder Mahal and Alicia Fox. Kind of the same thing, you know. I am enjoying that there's some more mixed max challenges in there. It gives more talent. Things to do, you know, because if it wasn't for this, we probably would not see Jinder Mahal or Apollo Crews on the show. Ember Moon's fantastic. Alicia, even Alicia Fox not, uh, is pretty good. But um, they really, uh, it, it, it was okay. Uh, Moon and Apollo Crews got the win. It keeps the momentum going for them. Um, I think Ember Moon deserves way more. She was fantastic in NXT, and she needs to move on to uh, a championship belt or at least a meaningful feud in women's division. Uh, with Jinder Mahal and Fox, I mean, at this point, they're pretty much jobbers at this point. Uh, um, you know, if that's fair to say, I uh, feel bad for Jinder Mahal, who is WWE champion. I think he got, I mean, that's a whole nother podcast for a whole nother time, but he got thrusted in there, you know, kind of got exposed, and now he's back to just being enhancement talent for a Mixed Max challenge. I guess you could say got the job done. At least these people got TV time, but the main thing is Amber Moon deserves more to be Mixed Max Challenge. She be, should be mixing up with uh, Sasha Banks, Bailey, someone along those lines to really get her out there. 
The next segment was with uh, um, Alexa Bliss with Ronda Rousey. What happened was that uh, Bliss had a new show called Moment of Bliss. Uh, she brought Ronda Rousey, and with Ronda Rousey, pretty much talked about, you know, she wants to look to the future, not the past. She said a couple nice things about a particular person, and that person turned out to be Sasha, uh, Sasha Banks. I'm super uh, fan of Sasha Banks. Um, I think that she, at any given night, could be the top woman in the WWE. You know, with her feud and Charlotte Flair in the past, now she gets the chance with Ronda Rousey. Unfortunately, she's going to lose to Ronda Rousey at the Royal Rumble. But I feel like, I mean, Sasha's, Sasha Banks, Sasha Banks has been under the radar for most of last year, basically getting to hang out with Bailey on the sidelines, which is and then that's a whole nother discussion with Bailey. But with Banks, she deserves way more than uh, what she got last year. She gets her time to shine. I think she's going to kill it with Rousey. Um, so, you know, she said that she's talking about Banks. Nia Jax came out. I don't know if I just got soured on Nia Jax because of what happened with Becky Lynch. I wasn't really a big fan of her before. I think she's just The Rock's cousin. Uh, she's a big girl, and, you know, she's pretty, but, I mean, and so WWE decided to go rock, rock with her, I'm just, I'm just not, I'm not a fan of her, and ever since she, you know, basically broke Vicky Lynch's face, uh, I think she thinks that she's getting booed because she's getting heel heat, she's getting real heat, I don't think people really enjoy her work, I'm just not a fan of Nia Jax, so when I saw her come out, it kind of took the steam, and then kind of, kind of took the air out of the balloon for me. So, but on the on the note, the match between Banks and Nia Jax was a good match. Um, I think uh, Banks brings, you know, is such a good wrestler. She brings out the best in a lot of other wrestlers. So she got pretty decent on Nia Jax, made Nia tap. And they're going to move on with Rousey and uh, Banks. I'm super excited about that. I think it's going to be another fantastic match. Uh, Rousey has been an excellent worker and probably one of the best rookie seasons of all time in WWE. And I'm ready her to get in someone like Banks uh, to continue on her legacy. The main event uh, was the Falls Count Anywhere between Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins for the IC belt. I really enjoyed this match. Uh, this is way better than our TLC match. I mean, a TLC that was, I mean, that should have been a TLC match. That shouldn't have been a, shouldn't have been just a, you know, a normal one-on-one match. With this match, there was a lot of intensity. You could tell there was hatred in the eyes for each other. Um, I really enjoy, kind of back off saying changing things up. I do believe I was listening to another podcast, and I forgot exactly who it was. I do believe it might have been Stone Cold's podcast, but all, it basically said on the long lines of that they don't show the arena anymore. They just kind of show the ring, and that's it. And so far in this new episode, you know, there's a Lumberjack match, there was a Falls Counts Anywheres, and there was a, um, I do believe, let me see, there was that. There was that. That basically that street fight between uh, Seth Rollins and Bobby Lashley at the very beginning. We actually got to see more of the arena, which is really cool. Also, on that note, I've been really. I think it's kind of cool. You know, they give vignettes. You know, I forgot where they were last week, but you know, this week they gave a vignette for Orlando. Kind of got to see the sights and sounds of Orlando. So I really kind of enjoy the you know the new graphics that each town's getting. Um, but back to the match, um, it was a very heated match. Seth Rollins looked like a man on the missions. Ambrose looks, I really like Ambrose as a heel. I think that, uh, he, he has a really good, uh, dance partner and Rollins, but I do think he might need someone fresh, like an, a fresh baby face to work with to really get his heel heat up. Cause right now it's, there's, it's a blood feud, but I think there's another level Dean can get to with somebody else. Um, yeah, really enjoyed the match. Um, um, at the very end, Bobby Lashley came out, basically put the SmackDown on Rollins, which was cool because at first I was kind of confused of what was going on, 
between the fight between Bobby Lashley and Seth Rollins, but at the end, I understand now and can really see them going after it. Um, yeah, just Bobby Lashley really tore up Seth Rollins um, and gave Ambrose the win. Um, yeah, uh, I really enjoyed Raw tonight. Um, it's still three hours, and there's still some lull, but I can see some silver lining in that. Like I said, I enjoyed the fight at the beginning, the Lumberjack, and the Falls Count Anywhere. It, you know, it, it gave me hope again. Now, what I'm really excited for is tomorrow with SmackDown. Because with SmackDown, it's shorter, it's two hours, and if it can just take a little bit of what Raw did, because SmackDown's already, I think, is a better show, but take what Raw did and add to SmackDown, it can take it to a whole new level. But that's for SmackDown tomorrow. Uh, I think Vince, you know, is listening to us. You know, um, you get, but here's the thing, though, you got to work with the pieces you have. I mean, He's built up, you know, all some of the superstars we might not be a fan of. You got to use them until others come in. You know, the new uh, NXT people are coming in pretty soon, so we can shovel some pieces around. So, um, I think it was a pretty good night. Um, I enjoyed it. I can't I can't wait for next week. I'm, I'm most, I mean, I, I wouldn't have thought it, but I'm mostly interested in the uh, Seth Rollins, Bobby Lashley. You know, I really enjoy Bobby Lashley with the manager, you know, uh, been healing it up. Uh, Seth Rollins being the fiery baby face, then finally getting after each other. And I'm just, uh, I'm excited for next week's Raw. Well, guys, I appreciate you listening. And Simon says to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video. Thanks, guys. And I'll see you tomorrow with SmackDown's review.